next month, my son and myself, we're going to walk the Camino de Santiago from Porto in northern Portugal up to Santiago de Compostela. It's about 200 kilometers. But before we start the Camino, I do want to visit a place called uh, Santarem. It's where one of the most important Eucharistic miracles took place. Many people will, know, will wonder, well, why did Catholics start giving out communion on the kneeling on the tongue? Why did, you know, when early Christians, we have accounts for them only giving out communion kneeling um, on the hand. Why did Catholics change? I suppose people have to understand the Holy Spirit is never quiet in the church. Bishops, who are the custodians of the apostolic faith, they're the custodians of the faith that the church has passed on. The bishops try to preserve uh, reverence for the real presence in the Eucharist. So over the course of the centuries, there was a series of Eucharistic abuses. And one of those abuses was in Santarem in Portugal. And a lady took the Eucharist. She went to a sorceress and a sorceress had uh, 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 said that she could use the Eucharist to gain some um, power that she was looking for. So I just thought I'd read through this um, miracle, which I think is very interesting because uh, many people say, oh, Christian, in the early church, we received communion on the hand and we need to go back there. And we seem to be discounting the whole discussion that we've had over the centuries and why the East and West communion was only ever given on the tongue. In the east, it's given with a spoon, the, the body and blood. In the west, it was given, the priest would give the, the body of our Lord on the tongue. But east and west, the laity didn't didn't uh, receive communion on the hand. Um, because there was this growing consciousness. This is serious. This is the body of our Lord. This isn't some token. And we need to take this seriously. We need to protect and preserve the real presence and pass on the faith of the real presence to the next generation. Um, and we need to guard it. And, and that's really what happened in the church. It wasn't uh, some arbitrary decision. It was to protect the real presence, to protect it in the church because it want, we, the church needs to show it, it was serious about protecting the Eucharist. Anyway, I'll just go through this miracle, uh, an anecdote, I thought, People might find it interesting. And when people challenge you why you only receive communion kneeling on the tongue, you know, point them towards these beautiful um, realities in the church. Why our Lord gave us this miracle to show that it was his body and why it was important to protect the real presence in the church. Okay, anyway, listen to this for a second. This is the place where, which I'll be visiting in the end of, of June with my son. It's the Eucharistic miracle of Santarem in Portugal, and it was in the year 1247. The Eucharistic miracle of Santarem together with Lanciano is considered the most important Eucharistic miracles. Numerous studies and canonical analysis were carried out on the relics. The host changed into the bleeding flesh and blood flowed out of the Blessed Sacrament. Both relics are preserved to this day in the chapel of St. Stephen in Santarem. Some popes granted plenary indulgences to Eucharistic miracles. Pope Pius IV and Pope Pius V, Pius VI and Gregory XIV. Still today, the Church of St. Stephen of Santarum is, possi is possible to admire these precious relics. According to the date recorded in the document commissioned by Alfonso IV in 1347, on February the 16th, 1266, in Santarum, a young woman overcome by jealousy for her husband consulted a sorceress who told her to go to the church and steal a consecrated host to use for a love potion. The woman stole the host and hid the Holy Eucharist in a linen cloth that immediately became stained with blood. Frightened by this, she ran home and opened the handkerchief to see what had happened. To her amazement, she saw that the blood was gushing from the host. The confused woman stored the particle in a drawer in her bedroom. That night, the drawer began to emit brilliant rays of light, which illuminated the room as if in, day, in daytime. The husband was also aware of the strange phenomenon and questioned the wife, who was obliged to tell him everything. 
The next day, the couple informed the pastor who went to the home to remove the host and return the Blessed Sacrament to the church of St. Stephen in solemn procession, accompanied by many religious and lay people. The host bled for three consecutive days and was then placed in a beautiful reliquary made of beeswax. In 1340, another miracle occurred. When the priest opened the tabernacle, he found the beeswax vase broken into many pieces. In its place was a crystal vase containing the blood mixed with wax. The sacred host is now preserved in an 18th century Eucharistic throne above the main altar. The Church of St. Stephen is now known as the Shrine of the Most Holy Miracle. Throughout the centuries, on various occasions, the host gave new emissions of blood. And in some cases, various images of our Lord were seen in the Holy Eucharist. Among the witnesses of this prodigy is St. Francis Xavier, the Apostle of the Indies, who visited the shrine before going on the missions. Every year since the miracle occurred, on the second Sunday of April, the precious relic is processed from the home of the couple to the church of St. Stephen. The couple's home became a chapel in the year 1684. So that's the chapel I'm hoping to visit at the end of June, hoping to do a small video there um, if everything goes to plan. It's important that Catholics understand our Lord always wants to show the truth of his presence in the Eucharist. He leaves these uh, signs in the church, which is why we have this increased consciousness of the Eucharist as centuries passed. And when people point to the first millennium and say, well, the early Christians only received communion on the hand. And we forget the, the time between when, when bishops were charged with protecting the Eucharist. That is their job. Uh, bishops should be passing on an increased awareness of the Eucharist, should be protecting the Eucharist, building churches for the Eucharist, constructing beautiful altars for the Eucharist. That's what we build on the real presence. And today we seem to be destroying that, destroying our chapels, destroying our altars, our altar rails, destroying how we receive the Eucharist. Why did the church change? To protect the real presence. Not to to protect the real presence, to show the, that we were serious about the real presence, but also to protect the Eucharist being stolen. There was a practical reason why the Eucharist was only given kneeling on the tongue in the Latin rite. And there's a practical reason why the Eucharist was given with a spoon in the East. You know, it was to protect and to preserve um, the Eucharist. It's, this isn't uh, something political. Uh, it's become very political in the church today. You know, people that receive the, the Eucharist kneeling on the tongue, sometimes we're lumped into one group and the others are lumped into another group. And that's very sad. I think that's the true division in the church. The true division in the church is not the Latin rite and the traditional Latin rite and the Novus Ordus. The true, the true division is how we treat the Eucharist, how it's weaponized. And that's very, very sad. You know, we have to adore our king, get down the knee. He's our king. Um, and we have to be humble are not holier nobody's holier just because you kneel and receive our lord in the tongue it's not because you're any holier it's, it's a sign of it's a sign of devotion it's a sign of love our, our lord loved us so much he died on a cross he loved us so much that he washed he knelt down and washed the feet of his disciples the day before he died we have to show the beauty of the eucharist for the next generation and i think it's important that we don't forget the steps bishops took during the centuries to protect the real presence, to safeguard the real presence, to ensure the Eucharist wasn't used for sorcery and witchcraft. And it's still done today. It's amazing. It's very sad. Anyway, God bless. Take care. Bye-bye.